I was wondering um, when when we pass from this reality frame and then we go to the to the afterlife reality frame, um, mm-hmm. is, is the transition that that transition that was specially made uh, for people passing over, is that transition similar to the dream state? So, for instance, you know, like when we most of the time, like when I'm dreaming, I I don't realize that I'm dreaming until I wake up and it's just like I'm immersed into the dream of, of whatever mm-hmm. it is. But I notice myself, you know, I'm making decisions and everything, but the dream got me full, like totally. Like it's seen <clears throat> once I wake up, I know that it's a that it was a dream and that I'm right. now in more transition. But while I'm in it, it's like I still have my memories because sometimes when in the dream I'm explaining like stuff about consciousness and like stuff that I'm learning. Sure. You know, it's because uh, you're the same consciousness, you know, you're the same consciousness in the dream in that reality as you are in the physical reality. So you have all the same memory, but it's a little different. It's somewhere in between like a dream state. It's not quite as, uh, as jumpy and random as a dream state, because, you know, you can be in a dream and you can be doing anything and then flash or in something totally different. You know, it, uh, it can change dramatically sometimes. And in, in the, uh, virtual reality that, that uh, you call afterlife. It's kind of the virtual reality we wake up in after we, we die in this physical reality. Uh, it's, it's not as mercurial, which means as jumpy, you know, it doesn't jump around as much as dreaming does. It's more stable than that, but it's not as solid and doesn't have as strong a rule set as this does. It's not like it's entirely physical, just like the dream. It seems physical when you're in it, you know, there are people and places to go and buildings and chairs to sit in and, it seems very physical, but you notice just like a dream, it tends to uh, be very light and airy, you know, in the, in the, in its physicalness, you can turn around, you know, you, you can turn around and something's different there. You know, you, you may be in this place and you walked into a building and then when you walk out, it's different. It's like now you're at the seashore or something, you know, so things, things can change there, but it's, it's not as changeable as dreams. It's somewhere in between the two. But things kind of come and go as you need them. So when you first get there and you're a little stressed about the transition and what's going on and where am I and what's help going on, there's a lot of it's busier then. It seems to be very busy and there's a lot of people around and milling and you know, you're told to go stand in this line or go over here, talk to that person, or somebody chats with you. And basically what they're doing is just uh, giving you a lot of humma 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 so you will relax and let things go. You see, they're they're just stringing you along letting some time go by so that you can just kind of let your, your attachment to the stuff you just left go. And they're very reassuring. Everything's be all right. Yeah. Everything's fine. Yeah. We were, you know, glad you're here, all that sort of thing. Make you feel at home, you know, introduce you to some of your relatives, whatever, whatever relaxes you. So it's kind of busy at first. And then after that, it gets less busy. And then pretty soon there's not all that many people around. And then you may, you may have, uh, you know, you find yourself then with, with other entities in there talking to you about your next, your next incarnation and what would you like to do and, and what do you feel like you most need to learn or what sort of experiences do you feel like you'd like to have? And you'll talk to them and they'll point things out and they'll say, well, you know, maybe you, you should do this or you really need to work on that. And you can agree, you can argue with them and you can say, no, I don't want to do anything. You know, I'm just out of here. I, I'm done. That last time was just a real pain. You know, I don't want to do that anymore. So um, they'll let you go. But what happens is you get bored. You see, it's not so physical as this. It's more like a dream. Well, if you were just in a dream and it just, you know, was boring, nothing was happening. Pretty soon, you you know, it's like you need to go somewhere else. You need to do something. So. Even the people who say, no, I don't want to go back, they get bored and they say, okay, what's next? You know, let's, let's work on that. So then you can do things. It depends on how the level you are. Uh, if you're a little uh, more evolved, you tend to do a life review. You look at what you've done, mistakes you've made, kind of get up in your mind what you need to work on and how you need to work on it and get those things done. And then pop, you go back, you find an avatar that's kind of picked out as being suitable for the things you want to do. and there you go. The system usually picks that avatar out for you. You don't get involved in the mechanics of that. It's just, you kind of say what it is you'd like and what you think would be good. And you kind of get a, an avatar and there you are, you know, somebody's, somebody's birthing you and slapping you on the butt. 
<laughs> and you start all over having to figure out, you know, what ends up. Right. So that's kind of the way it is, but it's not, it's not really like, well, when you're in that afterlife, you, you know, you get bored, you can get on the bus and take a, a ride downtown and shoot some pool and, you know, hang out with the guys. It's not all that, you know, it, it gets, it starts out being social, but then it narrows down pretty quickly to, to you and maybe a few, and then maybe just you. And now you're on your own and they want to, and, and you always have somebody say, well, you're ready to, you're ready to go on. You're ready to get back in the game. And eventually you'll say yes, because otherwise there's no, you know, you're just there. So it's it not, so it's more dreamlike than this reality, but it's not as, as jumpy around as a dream. Right. Is this, is it the same me that's making a choice in my dream state? So like in that state, is it, can I still talk to myself like, Oh, this isn't right. Or, you know, yes, can... absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You have an awareness and you have free will and you can make choices. You can talk to yourself. You can think and assess and weigh. And uh, you are still, uh, you know, you, you still have that kind of connection with your consciousness, if you will. So here you are, consciousness, and you, you're done with this one. Let's say you get plugged in now to the transition state. And the transition state, then you kind of decide what you want to do next. And then you get plugged back into the physical matter reality state. So you as this consciousness, you just keep right on trucking. So you're just moving from this virtual reality to that virtual reality back to the you know, the first virtual reality, but you need to transition because otherwise it would be kind of strange that, that suddenly you're, you're, you're an old man, you know, with, with cancer and the next year a baby, you see, you, you need a little transition there to kind of focus on what you're going to do. So, okay. the, the, so you just go to another virtual reality for a while, do a little transition and then you go back. So all you're doing, the, the conscious itself isn't doing anything. It's just there. It's just changing data streams. So the server serving the physical matter data stream, oh, you died, got run over by bus. All right, now we better start serving you, uh, you know, the transition data stream. All right, now we're ready to serve you the physical matter reality data stream again. But when you get that physical matter reality data stream a second time, now you're an infant. Right. So it's, then you start over. Right. Is it is this sort of like um like if like let's say that 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 you know that 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 um, you're going to enter this transition reality frame once you pass. And mm -hmm. so like, let's say when that, when that happens, will you yourself, like you being you yourself, when you're there, know it, like have it not like, Oh, all right, I'm here. I know it's, you know, like I know. It's yes, you can. And not only that, if, if that's your case, the transition is really simple. Okay. You know where you are, you know, it's a transition and right away you go to, well, let's figure out what I'm going to do next. You don't have to meet and greet. You don't have to stand in line. You don't need all that relaxing stuff. You don't have to be convinced that you need to have another cycle. Um, you just, you know, you're in and out. So it's like you don't, you know, you go, you go straight to where you need to go to get the next, the next experience if you're, if you're good with that. Now, you may want to spend some time reviewing the old one because there's lessons to be learned there. You know, and you can review the old experience and you can see things because sometimes your experience will surprise you. You know, sometimes you don't think that you were the way you were because you just don't see it yourself. And having that pointed out to you can be helpful. So you go right to that process where now you're in processing to your next experience packet. You don't need the rest of the fluff and stuff. So, yeah, the, the amount of the amount of fluffy stuff you need just depends on how much it, of that it takes you to get refocused. If you already know what you're doing, then you don't need all that. You just start right into the next thing. Can you pick? Well, it'll be continuous for you. It's continuous. You kind of, you die here. Well, you're a consciousness or you are aware and then, oh, well, you're aware someplace else. So it's not like you have this, uh, you know, an hour of darkness to wait between them or anything. You just, you're in one virtual, you know, one reality to the other. One data stream stops, the other data stream starts up. Uh, if you're if you're very like let's say like for me like i'm very attached to my music and i know that you know like i'm working on it and i'm working on like becoming something special and mm -hmm. stuff like that i have like really good material so let's just say that you know like if you really have something that, that you personally like tell yourself like this i want to do this and i don't i don't want to stop not even this lifetime and so like when you're in the transition state can you could, could one say like for instance myself say like I want to continue doing music. I want to, cause I want to, you know, finish doing this. So like, I want my priorities just like this lifetime is to do yes. music. 
Oh, yeah, wow. you, can, you can do that because what happens is what you're saying, you see, is not just I like to do it because it's fun, but you're saying I get a lot out of this music. It helps me grow. You know, I, I have a there's a dimension of me that grows and, and, and uh, evolves out of my connection with music. So it's a good tool for me. See? So music is a tool that, that I can use to, to grow with. It, it makes my world bigger. And that's true, you see. So then why wouldn't music be a good tool the next time? You say, I like this tool. It's working for me. I want to keep with it. All right. So you would probably be put in a situation where you may come in with a, an interest in music. You know, you'd be one of these people who learns to play the piano at five years old, you know, just because you want to. You say you come in with this interest in music. That, um, you know, that'd just be the way it would be because you'd have a, a proclivity toward that. Right. Why would it, why is it so hard then to remember your past life? Because I'm always thinking like that I'm gonna one day figure it out. Because it's it's always on my mind. Like who was I? Like I I know that I was somebody, but I just don't know who. And it's just like I, you know, I know that you said like when we when we pass on, like our memories fade away. And um, yeah. you know, they have some some research that I think that Dr. Ian Stevenson, I think that's his name, and he did some research with like certain kids who. They come back to this reality and they know exactly like who they were and they tell you like I was a pilot. Right. And, uh, right. You, you can. In general, people just lose it and they don't uh, they don't remember that that the the past life you just had fades like a dream, just yeah. kind of goes away. And the, there's a reason for that. You don't want to carry a lot of baggage with you, and you don't want to carry all the old things that had you trapped. You know, you want to let all that go, and you have to start over with learning. You know how to interpret the data. You start over because everything's a needs to be a fresh start. You'd say, yeah, but yeah, you know, it'd be nice if I could still read music, you know, or I could still do this. I wouldn't have to learn these things. Or it'd be nice if I could walk. Well, you're in an infant's body. You, you'll learn to walk. You know, you can go through that process. It's part of your part of your learning process of putting it all together. So there's reasons why you don't want all that baggage in general. Now, why do some people have them? Well. Could be several reasons. One, they may have had a very strong attachment to that, to where it sticks with them. You know, sometimes you've had a dream, and it may be a dream you had 10 years ago, but you still remember it. It was still, you know, you can look back and say, yeah, I remember that dream. Yeah, that was a powerful dream. I still remember it, you see. And other dreams, 30 seconds after you wake up, evaporate. They're gone. So it's the same way. If there's something you're really strongly attached to, you may bring that through with you. If you're most people, that's not the case. Most people, it was just life and things happen. And mostly, mostly your dreams disappear quickly. Within minutes, they're gone. If you don't write them down or you don't talk about them or you don't start working with them to bring them into this reality by doing something. If you talk about them, that kind of keeps them around and you can get them into this reality. If you write them down, you can remember. But if you don't do any of that stuff, they just evaporate. So that's kind of the way it is when you cross over. Most of your stuff just evaporates because it's just baggage. You don't, you don't need all that. But if there's something you're strongly attached to, you can, might carry that, you might carry that forward, something you can use. Now, if what you were attached to was your, you know, your, your child or your, your lover or you know, your mom and dad or something like that, that probably won't last for a long time because it's no longer that attachment, not really functional so much in the next reality. Whereas a thing about music could be real functional. So that would be easier to bring with you. Now, knowing that you were a, an airplane pilot in World War I, well, that may be something you just was really a, an amazing thing. Um, maybe you got shot down, which made it a very big impression on you. you know? Whereas if you didn't get shot down, you might not have remembered it. But because you got shot down and you remember those terrifying minutes as you, you know, as you fell out of the air, that may make such an impression on you that you bring that, you know, that you bring that with you. Or it may be that you're just an example to other people that reality is larger than they think, that reality is more than this physical. So here you are and you're five years old and you can explain all the details about this plane you flew and, you know, who you were and your name and all this kind of stuff. And maybe you're just, you just keep that memory because that helps other people get a bigger picture. So it may just be a, you know, something you're, you're, you're sent in with as a, 
kind of plant the seed for other people. It may not really mean that much to you, but you're just carrying that seed. So there could be lots of reasons of why that happens, but typically it doesn't. But your thing with music, that's likely. You know, look at some of the guys who were the who were the really big giants in music. They came in musical, right? They were they were performing, they were learning, they were they were good at their instruments almost as toddlers. You know, they were interested from birth almost. Well, that's probably because they've been doing that for a while. It probably didn't just come up as a random draw. Right. So, wow, thank you so much. That was great. I appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs>